world of emerging information. Now, it's time to extract the data and turn it into action. Live from the SiliconANGLE studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, this is Extraction Point with John Furrier. Hi, I'm John Furrier. Welcome to the Extraction Point with John Furrier. We have a special guest here, John Little, who's famous from MIT, who invented Little's Law, which we'll talk about, and what it means for computing. And my other guest is David Floyer, co-founder of Wikibon Research. We're going to go deep dive into the math behind big data. So John, welcome to the uh, program. We really appreciate uh, you coming on. So tell us about what is uh, Little's Law. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's start with, with something simple. Uh, Taco Bell, a Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, uh, Little slower has to do with queuing, and we all wait in lines, say at Taco Bell, uh, to get uh, a place our order, pick up our order, and leave. Okay, so Little Slaw deals with arrivals and uh, uh, and the rate at which people arrive. The average number that are there at any time in queue and the average weight per person in queue. So we have uh, a relationship. It turns out that the average uh, time in queue equals the average arrival rate of customers times the average weight in Q. And so in, in, in queuing terminology, L, which stands for line, and uh, lambda, which happens to stand for arrival rate, and W, which is waiting time per person. So it's L equals lambda W. OK, this has become uh, very much used uh, in the world, and the two major uh, areas have been uh, operations management, which I'll come back to in a moment, and, and computers. Inside computers, there are a lot of queues. Okay, and in computer systems generally. Okay, in operations management, you have uh, a, a big movement a while back in lean manufacturing okay lean manufacturing was a set of rules uh, or, or opportunities places to look for in your manufacturing system where you might make improvements okay but this was guided and in particular I know and he's written books uh, a fellow named Mike George who um, who was very successful at this and built a company and, and sold it later to Accenture. So what he did was he said uh, what you want is low cycle time. You want to get the stuff out the door, manufacture it, get it out the door. So that is low average time in queue. And that is equal to um, <laughs> the uh, hmm. that's my uh, It's not that one, <laughs> actually. Uh, it's, th it's the average queue length divided by the uh, tr transaction rate. And so what he did was uh, essentially look at these potential for improvement. And he found the major potential for improvement is in reducing the uh, the queues, the average queues, 
And so he would uh, scout around and find things in lean manufacturing which would reduce that. And it's that meant that he decreased what the computer people call latency, uh, but I call average, and, and the operations people frequently call cycle time. But it's essentially the time between producing the next uh, item or manufacture, airplane, whatever. And so this was a very successful operation, and it and it becomes clear because of the, the uh, Little's law, because Little's law is essentially a mathematical equation. You don't have to go out and check it in, in the field. It's true, and 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 so it 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 offers very strong guidance to people who wish to. Um, uh, improve their systems. But it doesn't improve the system itself. You have to look at the terms of it and pick on the ones that uh, you think you might affect and take it from there. David, you, you obviously have an um, interest in storage and operations around some of these new trends going on in the business and you know, storage has been the hottest area around cloud and 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 this new social web and so this is an operations equation and and often in in the big data world and storage and Hadoop and in the world we live in you know the word data scientist comes in but there's math involved what's your opinion on the complexities and how Little's Law is, is vectoring into it because you, you and I were talking about Fusion IO for example and some of the things they're doing with low latency Right, but right. Know, moving packets around is a, is queuing theory. Absolutely, is arrival times is <laughs> transit. This is math. I mean, manufacturing, computing. How do you draw that together? S How so, together? Uh, so w one of the challenges of of computers has been uh, the mismatch between uh, persistent data, uh, safe data, and the memory. Uh, where all the operations are done in the computer itself. So you're talking about computers working in nanoseconds, uh, memory in microseconds, and then you have the disk where you actually secure that data in, in milliseconds. That's a thousand times longer. It's a huge difference. And um, so you get these uh, queues. Uh, uh, you get queues waiting for results to come back from the disk to make sure that it's safe on the disk. They can't do anything until that, uh, that, that, that operation has taken place. What's, uh, what's exciting in, computer, in, in the computer world is the introduction of flash memories which can replace this uh, persistent storage, this disk storage, and operate uh, you know, a, a hundred even higher than that, 100 times faster. And the potential of that is to improve those systems, improve the queues on those systems, reduce the queue t queuing time on those systems. And um, uh, obviously, the trade-off is the cost. They're, they're higher cost than the disk drives themselves. But by applying those to the system as a whole, then you should be able to increase uh, if I'm right on this, uh, Professor Little, if you're if you're reducing that latency, or if you're improving uh, the time on that operational side of things, then you your potential is to increase the throughput through those systems. So, so I was I was I posted on Facebook today an article um, around that the Guardian wrote in the UK, and it was about the internet is over. And I want to bring this up because I think what's relevant about John being here today and this conversation is. Um, Extracting out, a little, little beeping going on here, uh, extracting out the data around what this really means. And the article is written around uh, this South by Southwest big tech conference going on where the Guardian writer, uh, the journalist, went down and said, he went down, I went down looking for the next big thing. This is a conference that's all about the next big technology trend. And he said he couldn't find it. And his whole article was essentially, it's upon us, that the world of life, the layer of technology, is now integrated into our life. Meaning, 
it's already here. This, we're integrated into a computer lifestyle. So it's interesting about the Little's Law, how it's been applied into manufacturing and, say, retail. You mentioned Taco Bell, queuing theories, lines, et cetera, throughput, operations management. That the, the computer internet is actually being part of our life. So this is a new operating cycle. And Jim Long, a friend of mine, wrote, um, uh, the obvious uh, trend, except that gaming is leading technology even more than in the research labs. Um, when cars and, and uh, leading technology is now even more into our life. When cars and highways were invented, they went from cumbersome to an integrated part of our life with rest stops, gas stations, and repair shops. That is what is happening here with technology, although more personal and ubiquitous. So he's saying social networks have he are here. So this concept of, of data the speed of data, the latency, is a big challenge for the lifestyle of the workers, productivity. Um, so, you know, so tie that together to the geek terms. Where, so how does that fit into uh, the life of, of, a, of a user? And then how does that relate to a company like an HP, a Fusion I.O., an IBM, an EMC, et cetera? Shall I have a go at that first? Sure. Then you can sure. comment on Thank it. To, to me, what's, in, what's really exciting about this is that previously we designed, well not we, the, 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 industry. the industry designed computers around these constraints, this big constraint, particularly on the disk drive. They, they had to do their best to, to get around this. And they invented lots and lots of different ways and techniques of getting around that, that particular problem. The exciting thing here to me is um, that when, you, when you're looking at computer architectures and you're looking at ways that you can improve it, the, the biggest single way of improving it, uh, the throughput of it, is going to be to reduce the latency. And, and it's a direct, if I understand your math correctly on this, it's directly <laughs> related to it. So if you go from a millisecond uh, to uh, 50 microseconds, you've essentially increased the potential throughput. And then, you know, that you know by, uh, th and we have a new phenomenon with this called the real-time web, which is real-time data analytics. You have, you know, um, mobility. Um, so, John, you're out here in Silicon Valley talking to some of the big companies okay. that are impacting the social lives of people. Okay, well, a uh, couple of elements there. But first of all, I'll, I'll, I'll corroborate this. The, uh, say how Little's Law fits into uh, what we just heard. He's concerned about transaction rate. Okay. In Little's Law's uh, uh, terms, transaction rate equals average Q in the system divided by latency. So if you want to up the transaction rate, you reduce the latency, you improve the latency. And, and so that's little slaw expression of uh, what we've just heard. So the, the on a more personal note, I want to ask you to an opinion from you. You're out talking to some of these young developers of some of the most biggest, most growing companies in Silicon Valley. I won't say their names, but they're you know in Silicon Valley uh, and Mountain View. <laughs> Palo Alto, Mountain View. You know, these are the biggest, most, uh, the new franchises in technology, the big new names, and they're impacting hundreds of millions of people with this new technology, these social technologies. And most of the engineers are young. Um, what have you found in talking to some of the younger generation of, of computer science well, folks? Well, I found that the guy sitting next to me was from MIT. <laughs> 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 Did they know who you were? <laughs> He asked me about a, 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 an electrical engineering professor. That, that <laughs> are, they, are the kids young? Are they just uh, unconsciously competent? Or what's, the, what's, the, what's your impression? I mean, oh, they go where the excitement is. And uh, the, the, the best people. Are they feeling little slow? For a long time. For a long time. Well, no. Uh, <laughs> well, after I spent my time on <laughs> uh, Little's Law this morning, the uh, this MIT guy went out and he got in a big uh, big discussion with another engineer. He said, "That gives me some ideas." <laughs> so, so you're creating a lot of uh, provocative kind of questions for these folks to think about. And uh, well, I had them prove Little's law. <laughs> Did they prove it? 
<laughs> I gave him an easy case. <laughs> yes, they <laughs> print. Cool, cool. Well, technology, you know, the extraction point here is that technology is changing. The platforms are growing layers upon layers, you know, like trucks and, and cars had highways and then rest stops came. More and more layers are building on our technology world and it's complicated. And, and the bottleneck in all this is storage. And, and we keep on coming back, David, to storage. Yep. Good old boring storage or yep. storage, as Dave Vellante was saying. But it's a sexy part of the equation. I mean, it is a bottleneck in the operations cycle. Yep. And and uh, companies uh, you know, that are looking into this flash, like Fusion IO, uh, uh, have the potential to make a huge impact on the, the architectural design of the systems uh, that are going to come in the next 10 years. I have to go on a, a slightly different subject, and, and that is uh, this change in all our lives, or most of us, <laughs> and, and that is the time we spend on the web with places like Facebook. And I don't know what that's going to do to our diet and our health, but, but I have to make a, a, a slightly different observation, which was made by Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of the web. And he said he finds Facebook a little alarming. He said he's spent his career trying to design the web so that nobody could could uh, take charge of it and, and particularly he had it in mind governments taking charge of it he says but Facebook is a huge private venture with uh, which is growing as, by it, as is Twitter that's recently. right, Twitter, Twitter. These are social utilities that are integrating into people's lives and, and that's they're right. not open, that's technically right. not open. That's right, and, th and that's really very interesting. Is there any views around some of the, your colleagues at MIT and around the world around how these operations could be transformed and be quasi-open? Is there any... Uh, that is the open source, and MIT has what it calls uh, open open courseware. It, it decided early on there was a lot of notion in, in education a, f a few years ago about universities essentially running uh, big educational operations and MIT decided no it wouldn't. It would essentially give away the, the software uh, and, and video and what have you uh, that, uh, that was in MIT courses to anybody in the world. Let's talk about some future. And, that, kind of. and, and just to reiterate, the Wikibon is about an open source of research uh, where we give away uh, the research. Wikibon.org is an uh, open yeah. research platform where yeah. the, where the content's free. Content is free, exactly the same philosophy as, as MIT. And, you know, our business is not, is, is improving that research. As is SiliconAngle.com and SiliconAngle.tv, of which we have to lower our latency and increase our transactions. <laughs> but, but we will apply Little's Law certainly to that. Um, question on the future. So, you know, just this is kind of just a, uh, this is going to make you uncomfortable, I'm sure, but, you know, um, this kind of gray, gray area is not black and white, but you talk about Taco Bell. I think about Taco Bell, I think about banks and bank tellers, and I think about McDonald's and In-N-Out Burger and all those franchises. They all have drive throughs But back in the day when I was a kid, not everyone had drive throughs So someone must have applied some Little's Law and said, hey, we have people in cars, we can put drive throughs in, and you know all that math that goes into cycle times and adding another teller, it's, you know, it's, it's typical operations theory. Um, is what has happened. Will there be something like a drive-through that's going to be a breakthrough in our social lives with computer technology? What, is there any, any vision around these new latency busters? Any, any things out there that might create better latency for us in our, in our life? Is it mobile phones? Is the mobile phone an opportunity for transactional oh, yes, efficiency? Well, it's certainly going that road. Dave, do you have any vision on there? Just speculation? I mean, it's yeah, something I, I think about it. It, it is. Uh, 
if the quicker we can do things, uh, if you apply it to our own lives, the quicker we can do things, the more things we can do um, in our lives. Uh, and uh, if you can do the transaction quicker or on your phone, or on the move, or when you've got downtime, yes, it has a, is, right. it has a direct uh, relationship to uh, uh, the potential quality of our life, whether we choose to spend it uh, to, to improve the quality. That's a personal decision. <laughs> well, I find that um, with all these things that I can do so quickly and fast with email and, and uh, on the web and what have you, um, and communicate with my students why I can work 24 hours a day. It's <laughs> 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 a dangerous topic. We all, we all are mobile. Um, we're here at the Extraction Point with John Furrier, with uh, John Little from MIT, who invented Little's Law, pioneer in what, what's called as marketing science, which is quite, quite popular these days with, with the access to data, and David Floyer, co-founder of Wikibon.org a uh, cutting-edge research firm that gives away its data for free. Um, final question for John uh, Little. Um, obviously, your career has been a storied career. You have a great reputation. Um, and you're out talking to all the young engineers and young guns in the, in the in computer industry. Um, is there any advice you can share with folks out there that are watching that uh, either uh, may go to MIT in the future or have gone to MIT or, or are tour inventing the future? Is any advice you want to uh, uh, convey to them? I think they're doing fine. <laughs> and um, uh, ad ad only advice is, you know, well, at, at school we used to say that there were 24 hours in the day and the, 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 f the first shift was for your homework. The second shift was for your job. And the third shift, you could do anything you wanted. So advice is use your shifts, do whatever you want, be creative, invent the future, apply Little's Law, <laughs> <laughs> increase your transactions, whatever that may be. Thanks for coming on the Extraction Point. We appreciate it and we're gonna come right back and do a deep dive with David Floyer and get into the into the into the deep dive data uh, science behind uh, some some of the Little's Laws applications. Um, so thank you for watching, Ricky. That's a wrap. <laughs>